will tell you that online learning for art classes isn't ideal. It's possible, and I'm grateful that we have the technology that we have. We started to put together kind of creative ways of using maybe some of the materials that you have at home, like painting with coffee. Um, I found some really interesting online, or I'm sorry, at home uh, printmaking tutorials that they can try. As history teachers, we always have favorite things that we like to talk about and, um, and little asides for every subject. And some of those things have gone away and we focus in on what is the, what are the essentials for what students need to learn. Zoom meetings as far as holding discussions for classes, then Loom for <clears throat> creating videos every day or um, at the beginning of the week or throughout the week to communicate information. I'm used to teaching my classes where everything's hands-on, so changing over to doing everything online is really different for me. Grateful that I consider myself an elder millennial. I grew up with the internet, with Google, YouTube, from literally day one. So I really haven't had too much trouble adapting or adjusting my own practices to distance learning. It's really more a matter of just preference. I much rather be in the classroom. I much rather have face to face time and being able to actually interact with, you know, people, anyone, students, faculty, staff, everybody. I ask a survey questions. This is to kind of take their emotional pulse, see how they're doing, find out how the how hard they find the, my lessons, how time consuming they find my lessons, and this gives me feedback on on how they're doing. Uh, one week, I sent uh, I included a picture of my guinea pigs with my message and I invited them to send pictures of their pets. I received lots of nice pictures of pets and one picture of someone's brother. Uh, one thing I've tried to do, at least um, starting. Uh, last week was to shoot a weekly video that's a little bit more like what I might do at the beginning of class. So, you know, just talking about stuff like this and um, talking about how my daughter's doing. I put together like a Padlet in each of my classroom, uh, online classrooms, and so students can upload their work and make comments on them. So at least they're sort of seeing some of that interaction. It's not just coming from me, but from their peers. Uh, we started off doing a lot of flip grids and we've been doing a lot of different discussion points for us to just share and check in with one another. But while we talked about some serious ones as this was getting started and like what was really going on, now I'm trying to focus on more of how are you developing yourself right now? What are you making in quarantine? I have so many students who are painting, cooking, and doing all sorts of other things that actually create goodness in the world. The beginning of the week, I will put some sort of motivation or uplifting type of video or link. And like this week, I put an article out about um, how to stay motivated in a digital virtual learning environment. You know, we're entering into week four of this and it wouldn't be surprising if kids are starting to lose their motivation. We got together about 40 different plants that I delivered all over Coppell and Irving, you know, everywhere where I've got students um, so that we could sit there and grow some plants together. So during this time, we would have something that uh, would be hopeful and we could share pictures of, created a Schoology class. It was just called, you know, Grow with Miss Murray. I mean, it's just something when you take care of something and you have something to look forward to and something to watch grow and change during this time. It's just one more way to give someone hope. A combination of, of, of woodworking, um, playing guitar, I've been shooting baskets up at the, um, the park nearby when I have time, and just, you know, trying to stay active. Take my camera and point downwards. You can see I got a few different synthesizers, keyboards, and other things in the room with me right now. Uh, this is my workstation and studio as well. Uh, so I'm trying to teach myself some music, some production skills. I am going to learn Italian. I got a, a couple apps on my iPad, and so I started doing that. Got some planting done. I cleaned out my attic. I cleaned out some closets. I have two little boys, uh, five and seven years old. So. We stay very, very busy. The boys have had a tent in our living room for the past week and we're reading Harry Potter. We threw a birthday party for our puppy. <laughs> I've gone for walks with my wife, Karen. I also have practiced my unicycling. I have practiced some magic tricks. Uh, hopefully I can incorporate those in my lessons in the future. I hope that they remember that the world is bigger than their cop hell bubble that we are all impacted in a different way and we all have an impact on others. We self-isolate, but that doesn't mean don't talk to one another. So I think it's really important that, you know, you stay connected to your friends and your family, you know, reach out to your teachers. 
time is valuable. Take advantage of the time that you have and don't be afraid to challenge yourself during this, this time. That there will be an end to this and that, um, you know, and that we're more grateful for the little things. We're grateful for the nurses and the doctors and the people um, delivering food and the people in the grocery stores. And we tell people more often, thank you. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Kenya, East Africa when I was young. And they have a Swahili proverb. It's haraka, haraka, hyena baraka. And it means hurry, hurry, has no blessing. I want them to learn to enjoy this time, to enjoy the slower lifestyle. This is one of the few times in their lives when they are not in a hurry. This pandemic is nothing small. And if you're feeling scared or worried or nervous or any other emotion right now, you shouldn't necessarily take that for granted or even think that it's invalid just because you see other people who are trying to be productive, creative, and still enjoy their times in isolation. If you're worried about not being heard, speak up reach out to your teachers, reach out to our counselors. We are all here to help you and we're all in this together.